Uh, this is uh, the anniversary of the creation of the Boy Scouts. At this date in 1910, as we uh, shift gears here for our first guest, the Boy Scouts of America, incorporated by William D. Boyce on this date, 1910, which takes us back 113 years. We've asked John Elliott to come in this morning and talk a bit about scouting and the Boy Scouts on their anniversary. John, good morning. Thanks for coming in. Oh, good morning, Rob. Thanks for having me. It's uh, always fun to talk about scouting. It's a passion I've had for many years, as uh, I've told your audience before. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a great program, and a day like today is a great day to be here. Um, and you're an Eagle Scout, correct? No, I did not oh, make no, it. Mr. Stubblefield is the, an Eagle Scout. The Admiral uh, yeah, is the, the uh, Eagle Scout. I was an Eagle Scout, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Bill's, Bill's an Eagle Scout, and your brother. Yes. We, yes. Right. We are from a very small town. We were the only two Eagle Scouts in the town. We were the first, and the troop, unfortunately, uh, a few weeks, a few months few years after that disbanded so we were the only two eagle scouts so you pretty much wrecked the entire <laughs> future of the scouts in your town <laughs> that's right after yeah. the stubblefield boys were done going through they're like we've had it that's it yeah. you know i've never viewed it that way rob <laughs> oh I, I i provide a interesting angle on things Bill. i'm here to is this where you need joe again <laughs> that's why i need joe again <laughs> my defense attorney joseph yeah. already five minutes are bought up <laughs> Did yeah. they start? <laughs> you never let me know when the clock started, Joe. We never do. <laughs> we never do. <laughs> we never do. That's awesome. He's going to have to go and make some copies on some paper now. That's going to be another $1,000. Yeah. Uh, uh, Joe, were you in Scouts as a kid? I, I was. I never made it anywhere near Eagle Scout level. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I was in Scouting. And uh, I, I remember it fondly. I, re I remember uh, Pinewood Derby races and, and those things that we did uh, – as part of a, a collaborative effort with the other scouts to uh, uh, have these kind of events, a little competition in there too. And Definitely, uh, and we're in Pinewood Derby season right now. Is that right? So it's, it's a tradition. <laughs> it, it is still going Amazing. on. It is it is as as wild as ever. Amazing. Corey, um, did you do scouting? Yeah, um, I did. Um, shout out to um, it's not called this anymore, but Asbury United Methodist Church down in Shepherdstown. Um, I was okay. a, I was a Cub Scout and I was a um, Boy Scout, and also shout out to my. Um, late great grandfather, he was also um, an Eagle Scout. So awesome. I grew up, you know, um, my great grandfather was very um, heavy on service um, to any kind. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he's military, um, but he grew up scouting and that really um, set the tone. So I was blessed, um, truly blessed to be able to be a great a part of a great um, troop. And I learned so many good things um, and, and met many great people. Still have a lot of friends to this day. That's great. And, and that's part of what scouting does is definitely you, you build friendships from young age that, that stick with you. Um, what's, the, what's the size and strength of the scout troops here in the Eastern Panhandle, John? Here in the Panhandle, we're up uh, around 450 right now. Um, Council-wide, we're back over 1,000. Uh, COVID hit us really hard. Sure. Um, we lost, uh, by the time it was all said and done, somewhere around 40% of our, our oh, numbers. No, it never came back? Um, they're just starting to. <laughs> um, Cub Scouts, especially the youngest ones, were, were hit very hard. It is so hard to keep elementary school-aged kids mm -hmm. excited via Zoom. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't have consistency in some way, shape, or form, um, it's also keep, hard to keep them their attention. So we, we lost a lot in the Cub Scouts, which are now bleeding up into the older groups. Uh, some of them aged out and didn't have as many coming in to, to replace through uh, the, the COVID years of, of not being able to meet. Well, but, well, one of the things we're seeing in youth sports is there started to be a big bubble up of kids that uh, maybe kids who didn't even play sports before the pandemic now just getting out of the house and, and playing Bingo. and we're getting these giant bubbles that are coming up through the youth leagues and into high school I, I presume that may also happen with scouting now it is it is starting to come back we we for the first year uh 2022 we ended the year higher than we started since the pandemic started in 2020 so we, we are on the right track mm -hmm. um nationwide we are back up over a million scouts in the program so on our birthday, it seemed like a great time to come chat about it. And I, I, I don't know if you guys or your audience are familiar with how Mr. Boyce decided to start scouting here in the United States. No. The, the Boy Scouting movement actually started in England with a right. General Lord Robert Baden-Powell. 
He was a, a military man in the South African wars and had written a book in 1899 uh, about scouting and, uh, in the military and, and the ways to do things and how to, to track and things like that. He came back to England and in 1908 saw a lot of youth reading that handbook. So in 1908, he published a Scouting for Boys version of that military handbook he had written a few years earlier. Got started. William Boyce in 1909, his publisher out of Chicago, finds himself in London on business, gets lost in the fog. And a boy comes up to him and says, you appear lost, can I help you? And so Mr. Boyce goes on and tells him, this is where I'm trying to get, I can't find it in the fog. Instead of just giving Mr. Boyce the directions, he took Mr. Boyce to the location where his appointment was. And William Boyce, being an honorable gentleman, offered to pay this young man who said, no, mm -hmm. I will not accept funds for doing my good deed as a Boy Scout, that is not what we do. Mm -hmm. We just do our good turn. So Mr. Boyce was very excited by that, thought it was a great way to be, great thing to do. Got himself an appointment with Lord Baden-Powell while he was in London, talked about the program, came back, and as you said, on February 8th, 1910, he incorporated the Boy Scouts of America. So this is our official birthday. We also kind of have a second birthday. Did you know about that one? No. In 1916, President uh, Hoover signed an incorporation document that the Boy Scouts of America got what's called a Chapter 34 charter, which incorporates us at the national level in one of only a handful of organizations that get this. There were a lot of people who were excited about the scouting kind of movement and creating their own little versions that weren't quite the same. So Congress gave us a charter that the president signed on June 8th of 1915. Um, so we are now one of only a handful. We were the second organization to get this type of charter. Um, the first one was the Red Cross. Um, of all of the charters, only the Red Cross and the American Legion are for adults. Everything else are youth-related. Things such as the Girl Scouts, the Boys and Girls Club, Little League. Um, the, the government decided, you know, these organizations are an important enough service. We want to make sure their original version can stand. And so we are now nationally chartered as well. That's great. Billy. Yeah, a couple of questions, John. Uh, you mentioned one million. You're now over one million. Put that in context. What were you at the highest part, highest uh, involvement in your history? And you fell in some bad times for a few years. And what was the low, uh, lowest? Um, it, I believe our low point, we were down I, in the 850-ish thousand range um, over the last couple of years sure. during the pandemic yeah. and, and other other things that have been going on. Um, I, I believe in our highest point, we were up closer to two million. Oh, two million, okay. Fine. So yeah. nationwide, we, we lost, it wasn't quite, actually, I guess it would have been about one seven because it mm -hmm. wasn't quite 50% nationwide, but it was close. Also, you have an event coming up in uh, about a month's time. Yeah, we do, and then we have another one coming a month after that. Okay. Um, here in Berkeley County, we're honoring our uh, Distinguished Citizen of the Year. Uh, this year, we have chosen a, a, a great recipient who, who accepted this honor, and it's one that we thank you for accepting last year. Uh, but this year, we're, we're honoring Pete Mulford. Good man, very good man. Um, yeah. As our Distinguished Citizen of the Year. Um, the, the events in the end of March. If you got to um, come, if you want to come, uh, let us know. We'd love to have you. Uh, then on April 29th, we're going to honor distinguished citizens in Jefferson County as well. And we we found uh, a, a wonderful couple who has spent their entire lives in Jefferson County. Uh, Marty and Carol Cable have agreed to be our honorees in mm. in Jefferson County. 
So we've got those are our two big events each year in the spring. You did not give the date for the uh, the March. Uh, it's March twenty eighth. March twenty eighth. Okay, and it's going to be the holiday. Holiday, end. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yep. And uh, and I've been to several, obviously there last right. year, uh, which we uh, uh, Rob was unable to uh, be the co-host, uh, but Joe Ferretti did and painted images that I will <laughs> never really be able to live down or forget. You imagine the people in the audience. <laughs> That's exactly right. I had trouble uh, conceiving it, uh, visualizing it, but Joe painted such a vivid picture, <laughs> a dripping vivid picture. Apparently, <laughs> the shower scene is only second. To, uh, psycho, yeah. To psycho, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you can't mention that without more explanation, Bill. The shower, the shower scene. scene. I mean, come on, Bill. I kind of like it the way you left it there. Yeah, with with about 250 people in the audience. <laughs> Corey Roman. No, um, I really want to um, thank you again. Obviously, I grew up in the um, Scouts, so I, I have a bit of a, a biased opinion to the organization. Um, but I also wanted to ask, I'm just curious, what is the structure of how um, the different chapters are being formed? So, for for example, I I was brought up in the the Methodist United Methodist Church, and that was how I got um, involved in in scouting. Um, what is the typical structure, and how do um, folks, if they're listening to this, how can they get their their young folk involved? Well, we still follow the same format basically of chartered organizations, and, and a lot of them are churches. Um, easiest way to get involved is very easy website. It's bascout.org. Um, all one word, lowercase. Type in your zip code and it will give you a list by your age group of units that are close to you. Uh, most of our units are still meeting at churches. Uh, we do have a few that are meeting in Ruritan clubs or uh, the one even over in Jefferson County is at a school. So, um, but it is a, a neat way of, of doing things. Just go right to BASCOUT.org, and it's, it is so easy to find them. Uh, we find partnering with the other organizations, such as churches, who, who like us, understand how important it is to, to build the, the moral and ethical character of our youth, um, partner with them and, and use, use them as a location, because they're more likely in the neighborhood than we could put buildings anyplace. Joe. John, we uh, in this studio often talk about the problems confronting our youth. And I would imagine you could speak very well to how scouting can deal with some of those issues that our youth have, whether those issues or concerns are self-inflicted by our youth uh, or not. Um, you know, we, we know those pro- what those problems are. It, oftentimes, they're, they're to t- attach to their phone or video games and things like that. Talk a little bit about the outlets that scouting provides our youth. Wait, well, uh, the official mission of the Boy Scouts of America is to prepare young people to make moral and ethical choices throughout their lifetimes by instilling in them the values of the Scout Oath and Scout Law, it, which basically is telling you that, uh, that we've got a code we're going to expect people to follow. And I think a lot of times that's that's lacking in in youth and it's been there for each generation it's nothing new um but we give them an outlet and going back to our founder lord baden powell he once called scouting fun with a purpose where we create things to do that are enjoyable we have opportunities outside this hat i had with me today is uh from our council camp we, we do activities out there at camp rocking and uh six weeks of summer camp, for example, where all sorts of learning can take place, but it's done in the outdoors. It's done where you've got something different. And for those who are excited about the video games, we now have a video game tournament on Thursday nights. (laughs) Um, So we give them a chance to do the things that they Do you at least hold it outdoors, John? (laughs) We do. (laughs) We, We put a big screen on the side of one of our buildings with a projector to show the game on the side of the wall. That's smart. Um, So we do hold it outdoors, but we also teach things such as robotics um, so that we're we're getting them into the STEAM area as well, um, where they're able to take things that they're passionate about this year. We're going to be doing some animation. We've got game designs. We've got different things that we're teaching that allow them to use these things that can be a negative because they get too wrapped into the games mm-hmm. um, and, and turn them into positives. 
Yeah. John, one of the things that I think I got out of Bill, scouts, I don't know if Joe was done just yet. <laughs> no. He didn't say I rest. No. In my case. I, I passed the witness. <laughs> well, he, but, but he already had his, his, in my hand, my pocketbook's coming out already. As long yeah. as he reserved the right to recall. That's right. Yes, yeah. Exactly. But, but anyway, what I thought, what I got out of scouts, probably more than anything else, was a sense of team accomplishment. Accomplishing goals with your partners, with your other fellow scouts. And that, I think, is a significant contribution from the scouts. Your patrol and your troop are, are your family. They, they are, are who you're with. And, and throwing out terms that we use that not everybody may know, a patrol is a group of usually six to eight um, young people, and, and the troop is a group of several patrols. Um, and it can be as many as the end up being there. We, we've had troops with as many as over 100 youth in them at a time and others with the 10 or 12 and, and they, they work wonderfully either size. So I understand now, Rob, that when we finish something, we're supposed to say, I rest my case. Just, just if you're an attorney. Just, just, an attorney. just Only if you're an attorney. <laughs> yeah. there, us non-attorneys, what do we say? Be uh, careful, be if, careful. If you're, if you're not an attorney, <laughs> just you, ask the you attorney. You just look at your co-host and go, your turn. <laughs> That's all you got to do. The, the rule, the, it's nice to have an environment with good, solid rules, Rob. Yeah, you got to have a format. And that's what we try to instill in the scouting movement. You got to have a format, Bill. Hey, uh, I'll, we'll sort of mention Chris uh, Chernock on our uh, Facebook page mentioned that he's an Eagle Scout, uh, too. And I guess he grew up in Texas as a kid in the 80s and 90s being an Eagle Scout. So whenever we mention that, there's always somebody who pops up and says, hey, I'm one of those guys, too. I love to hear it. Get in touch with us. We'd love to, to have you uh, find a way to get you back involved in scouting uh, uh, from the 80s and 90s. That's when I was in youth and in the 80s. I, I ended up, uh, didn't quite make it to Eagle. Got a high school band got in the way, but uh, I, the time frame would be a wonderful time. And uh, let, let us know, and, and we'll get you back involved in scouting in some way, if you'd like. Were you a guitarist? Pardon? Were you, did you play the guitar? I did not. Drums? No. I was a tuba player. Tuba? Oh, marching band. Marching band. Oh, I thought you were talking about like you split up. No, and no, not a rock band. Rock and roll no. band there, man. No. <laughs> hey, uh, John, how do people find out more about the Scouts and, and maybe uh, sign up and join? And when is the next time you're accepting new members, so to speak? We accept new members at any time of the year. Uh, Year-round membership. Uh, we, we go, and, and it, it's great value for the buck because it is a year-round program. Uh, go to beascout.org is the great way to uh, find us. Uh, type in your zip code and it'll uh, get you right there, tell you where the, the units are close to you locally. Or you can always call us in our office. Uh, the, the local headquarters phone number is 540-662-2551. So either go to beascout.org or give us a call at uh, 540-662-2551. We'd love to talk to you about ways that uh, we can get you involved or your youth. And uh, one thing, even though we are still the Boy Scouts of America, we do accept both boys and girls into our programs. Um, so, so we'd love to have your your young people, whether they're boys or girls, get in, get involved. Did you ever see the movie Moonrise Kingdom? No, I have not. Bruce Willis? I have not seen that one. Have you? Has anybody here ever seen the movie? I'm no. It's a quirky little movie. Very cool kid that's a boy scout and uh just see it I, all i can tell you is it's a wonderful little little movie moonrise kingdom okay? and join us on march the 28th to honor pete my to honor pete we'd love to have you thanks for coming in john thanks rob for having me and happy birthday happy to birthday scouts. boy scouts <laughs> yeah there you go we were all scouts in this room at one point or another right yeah